right, we're going to look at the coordinate rules based off of reflections and rotations in the coordinate plane. Before I do so, I'm going to go, ah, spoiler alert! Um, I mean, obviously, if you're just finding this video to, to learn these concepts, there's no spoiler alert. But part of the fun of this is actually to investigate it, to find it out for yourself. So let's talk about a reflection uh, in the y-axis to start with and see what actually is taking place. So in this case, uh, we're going to reflect over the y-axis. So again, there's our little r. It doesn't have to be little r, but it is little r. And the way we really know it's uh, a reflection is that it tells us a line to reflect in. And we're going to reflect in the y-axis. So let's take uh, a, b, c and reflect it. Now a is 5 away, so it would be 5 away over here would be a prime. C would reflect to here, C prime. B is three away, it would reflect to here, B prime. So this is what a reflection in the y-axis would look like. Let me connect some things here. And that's a very simple uh, reflection. Why we're doing this, though, is to look at what's taking place with the coordinates. So A would be found at five and one. B would be found at 3 and 7, and C uh, prime, sorry, would be found at 1 and 4. Now let's look closely at what's taken place here. Um, this is the original uh, pre-image, and here's our image points. Negative 5, 1, 5 and 1. Negative 3 and 7, 3 and 7. Negative 1 and 4, 1 and 4. You know what took place. The values uh, have, um, for the x, have been negated. So this is actually a reflection about the y-axis. would map any point x, y. What it would do to it is it would negate the x, but keep the y the same. This would be the coordinate rule for a reflection in the y-axis. Because what it does is it negates the x. Whatever x is, it makes it the opposite. If it was negative 4, it becomes 4. If it was 3, it becomes negative 3. The reason the y stays the same is because things are moving in a parallel manner. And so the y doesn't change. What's happening is, is the x, either right or left, motions. Easy to understand. Let's do a reflection now in the x-axis. I bet you can already guess what, what's going to happen here, but let's do it anyways. C maps to itself at negative 2 and 0 because it's on the line of reflection. A maps to this location, A prime, which is negative 8, positive 2. B is 4 above, so it goes to 4 below B prime at negative 3, negative 4. Let's look closely at the coordinates and see what they tell us. Ah, you can see what happens. X stayed the same, so we're reflecting in the X axis. It takes a point X comma Y, and it leaves X all alone, and it negates the Y value. And the reason it negated the Y value is because points that are above get reflected below, changing in the Y. The points below get reflected above, changing the Y but not the x. Remember, things move in a parallel manner when you reflect. They're all perpendicular to the same line, and so they're all move in a parallel manner. The third side that we want to look at is that of a reflection over the y equals x line. Now, y equals x is a fun line because it's not vertical or horizontal. It's got a, a slope there of 1. This is a line that uh, has all of its points x equaling y, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, 7, negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So let's do a reflection here of d, e, f. So actually, yeah, so this should just say of d, e, f. That's where we want to reflect. And so d is at 3 and 3, so it actually doesn't go anywhere. It's on that line. And then e is at 9 and 4. Now let's think about how we could figure out where this goes. We talked about a couple different techniques. I'm going to just kind of zoom in on it and just show you a technique. It doesn't have to be the only one. 
I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five to the line. One, two, three, four, five to the line. Away from the line. So I kind of like count in and count out. You can also see that that is a perpendicular distance from here to here. And I could do that or I could use patty paper. F uh, is also, uh, I can count straight in too, so I'm going to count out too. So F prime will be somewhere here. Those are a couple of fun little tricks that I use to reflect on a y equals x line. Uh, you can just simply use some patty paper as well. No problems there. Patty paper would almost be simpler, and you'd see it right away. But this is fine. Maybe just to check it, let's, let's use a piece of patty paper and confirm I did it right. So let me mark uh, this location and this one, say. And I'll do a quick sketch of my guy. Actually, I'll mark 0, 0, and 10, 10. When I flip it over, I'll put 0, 0, and 10, 10 in their spot. And notice I did do it correctly. So now that I've done it correctly, I can list uh, F here. F prime is at 1 and 3. And then this guy is at 4 and 9. Oh, cool, man. Look at what happened. Um, in the first case, nothing. But in the next case, they switched. Oh, that's awesome. So actually, these switch, but you can't tell because it's on the line. So a reflection about the y equals x line maps x comma y to y comma x. So the three rules for a reflection are as follows. These are so awesome to know. Uh, the x-axis, right? the y-axis, and the y equals x line. These are the most typical reflections that if you knew right away, it would be a great shortcut. So let's think about it. If you reflect in the x, it's the y that changes. When you reflect in the y, it's the x that changes. And if you reflect in the y equals x, they switch with each other. Very cool. These are the three essential coordinate rules that will save you a lot of time and energy once you move to the coordinate grid. Just memorize these bad boys.